So if there's one thing that's kind of time consuming and boring is uploading and activating plugins in WordPress. You upload a clean install of WordPress and then you have to go through the whole process of finding, downloading, installing and activating all of those plugins. In this video, I'm gonna show you one simple way you can save your time and potentially make more money without having to go through that boring, laborious process. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites together. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so if you develop WordPress for a living or you just upload copies of WordPress on a regular basis, you'll know that it takes ages to install all those plugins. Well, we're going to take a look at WP Fabs today. This is both a free and a commercial service. So if you only want to use free plugins from the WordPress repository, you can use the free version. But if you want to get access to the full pro version where you can install Code Canyon plugins and plugins that you paid for, you also have to pay. Today, we're going to look at the free version, but that pro version is available should you be interested. So let's just jump over into the WP Fabs website and take a look at how we utilize their service. So I've already gone ahead, jumped onto the dashboard of WordPress, and as you can see, I've got a fresh, clean install of WordPress, where the only plugin that I have is the classic editor. So how do we go about now loading in all of those plugins? Well, normally you go through the process of adding them one at a time, whether you upload everything through an FTP or you go to the WordPress.org repository, grab all your free different plugins, and then, like I say, go through the manual process of uploading the commercial plugins you have, like Elementor Pro and things along those lines. But there is an easier way. If we jump over to wpfabs.com, this is a plugin that allows you to create lists of plugins that you want to work with. You can then use the wpfabs plugin inside a clean install of WordPress and then simply load in that particular list of plugins you want through the API and then you can simply go through the process of adding them. Now at this point in time there are two flavors of the WP Favs account. You have the free account which gives you access to anything that's in the wordpress.org plugin repository. So all those free plugins, you can use those with the free version of WP Files. However, if you want to take advantage of the ability to use things like commercial plugins that you purchased or things like on Code Canyon, you'll need to pay for this particular plugin and the service that goes with it. I'm going to just go through the whole simple process of using the free version, but I will show you then some of the different advanced options you have if you want to tap in and start paying for this plugin, which if you install a lot of WordPress installs and you have a lot of plugins you want upload this could save you a lot of time and make you more money if you're doing this commercially however like i say for now we can keep this simple and just use the free version now once you've created your wp files account you can do a couple of things you can create a new list you can go and take a look at lists that you've already created and add or take any of the plugins away from there you can go through and take a look at any bookmarks you may have created or you can browse different sort of lists that other people have created we're going to go through and take a look at creating our first new wp fav list so let's click on there that'll take us through and now we can go through and specify some of the basic details so we're going to call this one basic install so we just quite a bit more call it. it doesn't really matter too much whatever makes sense to you short description if you want to we then have the option of making this public or private if we set this to be private then no one else will see the list of sort of plugins that we use so i'm going to say then i'm going to set this to be a private option now we come down, you can see we have three tabs, WordPress.org, Custom Plugins, and Code Canyon Plugins. Like I said, we need to have a paid-for account to access the Custom and the Code Canyon Plugin options. So if you do have plugins that you want to upload, like I say, like Elementor or things from Code Canyon, you will need to pay for it. But we'll keep this simple. So let's just come through and say we want to put in something like SEO Press. So we'll go through there, and you can see it'll search for anything that matches what we type in. So we want SEO Press. We'll click on it. That's what first one we want. And we'll say the next thing we want to put in there will be the free version of Elemental. Again, here we go. Elemental. We can go through now and add as many different things that we want in here until we've got our new custom list. So let's just quickly add a couple more plugins that I regularly use. And finally, let's just simply add in WooCommerce. There we go. We'll add that in. So we've got a couple of key plugins that we use on every single site. We'll hit save on this now. 
And once that's saved, we now have our new list ready to start working with the WP Fabs plugin inside our clean install. So there we go. It now tells us there's our basic install, which is what we've just called it. We can sort of set this to our favorites. We can copy this. We can make edits to it, whatever we want to do. Underneath, you can see we've got some more information about each of the different plugins that we're choosing to actually have as part of this particular list. So now that we've created our first list inside WP Fabs, we're ready to go through to our website, install the plugin that we need, and then we can take advantage of this new list that we created. So what we do is come into the plugin section, say add new. Once we're in there, we'll go through and find the WP Fabs. So we'll just do a search on that inside WordPress. There it is. We'll just say install now. Once that's installed, we'll go through the process of activating. Then we can go through and just take advantage of this plugin. So we'll click activate. Once that's done, that'll take us over now, and you can see this plugin is now set up and activated, ready for us to start working with it. And once that's installed, all we need to do is come up to the settings section, or we can come over to the little, this little wrench icon on the left-hand side and come down to the WP Fabs inside there. You can see that then takes us through to the various different pieces of information we've got. We've got the API key, the quick key, and the WordPress.org username. Now, I've already gone ahead and put my API key in and the quick key, which relates to the actual list we've got. So let's take a look at where we find that information. Let's just jump back over to the WP Fabs. We're looking at the My WP Fabs section. The My API key is this long string of numbers and text across the top. You can simply copy that, drop that into the API key section, get my WP Fabs, and that'll show us a list of all the different lists we've got inside WP Fabs. Alternatively, if you want to just use the quick key, Again, we come back over, you've got this little lightning bolt option underneath each one of these different lists you've created. You can copy that, click on there, there's the copy option. So you just come from there, then simply paste that into this WP5 section, quick load it. However, I have found that that can be a little finicky and does sometimes generate some errors. So for me personally, I think the get WP5 is the better option. The other and third option we have is the wordpress.org.username. Now, what that allows you to do is if you created an account with wordpress.org and you find you have plugins that you've favorited, drop your username in there, load your favorites in, and that'll load a list of all the different plugins that you've favorited inside your wordpress.org account. Quite useful. So anyway, let's take a look. Let's say get WP Fabs and let's take a look at the lists we've got in there. So once that's established a connection, you can see it'll now show us any of the lists we have. So you can see we've got basic install, and that then shows us underneath the four different plugins that we've selected to be part of this list. If we jump back over to WP Fabs, you can see it's exactly the same lists we have there. So we can confirm that. Okay, so once we've done that, all we need to do is say run this list. So we click on there, that will then go through, and you can see there's all our plugins. It tells us the plugin. It comes from an external source. It's a recommended what version, if that's available, and it tells us currently that's not installed. So what we need to do is select all of them, or if we don't want everything, we can just choose the ones that we do want, and then we can come to the bulk actions and we can say install, click apply. That will then download those into our copy of WordPress, and we're then pretty much good to go and activate in those when they're all downloaded and ready. And there we go. It tells us now they've all been downloaded. So we can just jump back to the return to the WP Wavs installer, you can see now it says installed, installed but not activated. So all we need to do is the same thing again, select all those, choose activate and click apply. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now what happens if you've gone through the process of doing this and you've installed all your custom plugins and then you go and change your list and you add a few more in there. And again, you want to sort of benefit from the fact that all those things are in one simple list that makes it a lot easier than go through the process of finding them inside WordPress, downloading and installing them. Very easy. Let's just jump back over to WP Fabs. Let's come over to my lists. And once we're in the my list section, I can then come in and I can edit this list and add, take away whatever I want to do. So let's just come in and say we want to add something new. So we'll load that up. Once that's loaded up, we can then go through and find any additional plugins that we want. So again, we'll come down, we'll just go through and search for something else with a custom post type UI. We'll let that go through the process of finding it. Then we can simply select that. You can see that's now added in. We'll hit save on there. So once that's saved, that'll now be added to our list. Just jump back over to WordPress. All we need to do now is come back into our WP Fabs, click on there, come back to the Get WP Fabs, and we'll just refresh that by just clicking on Get WP Fabs. And you can see there's our new list with our additional new entry in there. We can say Run This List. It'll go through exactly the same as before, and it'll now tell us that this one isn't installed, whereas everything else is. So we can simply come in, click Install, or we can do a bulk install like we did the first time. 
There we go, that's now downloaded. Return to our installer, and we can then go through and activate anything that's not activated or deactivate anything that we want to get rid of. So that's the basics of using WP5 to bulk install and configure your plugins. So it's a very quick and easy way of doing things. And if you want to take advantage of being able to use additional paid for plugins from, like I say, from Code Canyon or anywhere else, then I'd highly recommend taking a look at purchasing your own full version of this to get full access to the pro level features. The link will be in the description below. Full disclosure, it is an affiliate link, but that's not the reason I'm showing you this. I just think this is one of those things that speeds up the process of creating your WordPress websites, especially when you have to do this over and over and over again. So there we go, that's the WP5 service. What do you think of it? Is this something you've used yourself in the past or you could see yourself using in the future? Have you found something that's just better than WP5s? Well, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to get your feedback on this and also other options that are available to us out there. Well, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know in the comment section why you didn't enjoy the video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. Now, speaking in the comment section, I'd love to get your feedback on this, so leave any comments, any suggestions at all in the comment section below. Well, as always, if you'd like to take a check out more content in the channel, take a look at the videos on the side right now. There's some great content there. As always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.